I'm Tom Ray from the band Lorenzo's Music, and you're listening to the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. So the point of this show is just to meet new people, other musicians, see how they create. But one thing that our band has kind of always had happen is people, since our music is under Creative Commons, people will contact us to ask if they can put our music in the background of their videos but sometimes like the case with the people today they ask if they can put it in a movie they're making my name is terry Baylog, and i am the co-owner and co-director for our company called nowhere media i'm darcy Baylog. i'm also darcy Baylog at alice house i run the company nowhere media with terry and we are independent book publishers and filmmakers so it was kind of good timing because as I was setting up interviews for this show, they contacted me to ask about putting one of our songs in a movie that they're doing that's called Feet. So it's 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 an interesting film. It's actually kind of, when we talk about the storyline, it's like, oh, okay, but it is about feet. It's, but it's, it's about, <laughs> let me just let them explain it to you uh, in this interview. First of all, you're doing a movie and you wanted to use our music in it. So tell me about this movie because it's weird. Yeah. And, and I'm safe to say that, right? Weird. It is. Weird. Yeah. So tell tell me about the movie, first of all. I'll tell you about the movie. So the movie is called Feet. And it is about an elderly art gallery security guard whose feet hurt. And through all of this, he becomes obsessed with looking at people's shoes through the security cameras, you know, at the art, at the art gallery. And he becomes obsessed with filming feet as an artistic passion and all of the oddness that happens to him because of that. (laughs) And I'm assuming the misinterpretations of it, like the whole part where you just said his feet hurt. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Like instantly when you said that and from watching some of the trailers or the, the bits of the movie, I'm just like, Oh, that all makes sense. Now I get in the short bits that people don't get what he's doing. But he ends up getting, you know, fired because of it. He loses his job. And then him and his friend, who's kind of one of those salesmen, always trying to make a million bucks kind of guy, you know, he's always got a deal going on. Um, he convinces him to get involved with this very strange YouTube producer to make feet films and of course the youtube producer wants to turn it into feet fetish films which mm. we uh, we thought was funny because it's kind of the same thing <laughs> it's really not <laughs> right there's no distinction and yeah, actually like- when we wrote it we thought youtube producer was a joke didn't realize you thought you were making it, it up <laughs> i think it was <laughs> happening as we were writing it and uh, but yeah, he's a strange guy. Yeah. And we also didn't realize that we would attract as much foot fetish people as I think <laughs> I was oh, accidentally, I, which was sort of perfect and poetic. I mean, we, we get like little messages from them every once in a while. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is totally happening. It's, it's... <laughs> yeah, no, even even Facebook thinks that like it goes uh, related pages and the related pages on your Facebook page that they suggest are definitely like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of the perfect point, too. Right, it yeah. was the point. It was the point that he was trying to do something pure and out of his, and then he really does, he's not an artistic person, mm-hmm. but he's sort of surrounded by art, and then he becomes impassioned about sort of the, the look of feet. And actually, oddly, when we were looking for footage that we could use as footage that he had shot, you know, for the movie, we had a lot of footage of feet that we had done. <laughs> Because you get you know, part of the things like right. videos or whatever. I was like, hmm, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, and when you're doing other videos, when we're doing other productions, you know, you pick up B roll, and one of the things you get sometimes is people walking or, you know, yeah. close up of feet. It's sometimes what you get for B roll. So it turned into like this B roll search that we made for feet. And it was funny that we had so much. I like extreme close ups, anyways. If I could just get someone's eye, you know, or their eyelashes, I just, I really like that. And so it wasn't too far of a stretch for, for me to think that someone could really become obsessed with filming feet. Huh. 
how do you get together and come up with these concepts? And how did you get together and come up with this concept? <laughs> this actually has a good story behind it. We, right. um, we were accepted into a film festival in LA for a music video that we did. And we were taking some time off, I think, in the bed and breakfast that we were, you know, staying at before we went into the festival. Actually, that morning, we had met a gentleman at the breakfast table. You know, you go to like a bed and breakfast and everybody's eating there. Mm -hmm. And he was this gentleman from the Isle of Man. So he's in, I believe, is England. Okay. Is it, is it part of England? It might be Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. Anyways, he was this lovely gentleman. He was so nice and he was very, and we just got to talking to him. And he told us about going to an art museum and how the security guard kind of followed him around and kept asking him about his shoes. So that's kind of what we had heard that morning. And then that day we were sitting around, we were trying to write up a list of different films we wanted to make. We were just kind of brainstorming. And we were like, well, we need to round this up because I don't think we had a round number. We only had, you know, we had like, we had nine. And we're like, well, we feel like we need to have 10 ideas just, you know, for the heck of it. So then we started being like, well, let's make up one. We started talking about that security guard and they were like, who is that guy? Like, what's he doing in this? <laughs> You know, we ended up sitting there going through the outline of it and kind of made it up and thought it was funny. And then when it came down to the point where we were ready to try to do our first feature film, because we had done shorts and music videos up to that point, when it came up to that point, we, we were like, well, which one of these do we think is doable? Because some of our ideas are fairly grand and would take a lot of money. And this one seemed like it was reachable for us. And plus, it was kind of a comedy. So in some ways... We didn't really have to take it quite so seriously. I mean, we have to. We have to make it, you know, as good as we can. But it also gave us a little bit more lightheartedness to it. So that's how that ended up. So, but it actually comes from that story of that gentleman being followed around by the security guard. That's how a lot of our ideas come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sitting around, um, something strikes us funny or interesting. Sometimes we have dreams. Like we'll be talking about some weird dream that we had. And we're like, oh, yeah. And then and then we like the visuals of it and we just, you know, talk about it with each other. So we have a list kind of in our heads. We've started putting it down more concretely of a lot of different different stories that we want to do. And then things will come to us later, like we're out doing whatever. And then Terry will text me. He's like, you know, I was thinking about, you know, that the seven Scottish sailors movie. And I saw this <laughs> documentary and wouldn't it be cool if they were like wearing these certain costumes. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of fantasy worlds of our own, <laughs> which we've been doing since we were children. <laughs> how are you writing it or coming up with the seat? Like how do you, how does that part even come I guess together? We, yeah. We usually do a pretty intense outline um, usually we'll go out and hang out somewhere like at a coffee shop and it's, uh, it's on a Google doc and laptop and we'll just type things up and we keep one document with all of our thoughts in it. Once we're going to get ready to start actually writing a script, I usually take it and outline it and I'll write like the script, you know, cause it's a certain format that you do and I'll throw in dialogue. I'll throw in dialogue that we know we, that we said we wanted. And then I'll just kind of you know, write what I'm thinking. And then I give it to Terry and then she looks it over and we go back and forth with that and make changes. Once we have it all kind of our Google doc all filled out and we know you need to, to, to move everybody along and where you want to, and where you want the characters to end up, throw some ideas in the middle. And then it's really pretty structured for me when I'm putting it in, in the um, screenplay format, you know, you're going to need probably 40 scenes. And so where you plug in, the beginning scenes and the middle scenes and the end scenes, and then you yeah. kind of fill in the middles to see, see what needs to happen. I remember learning in film school, um, what was the name of that movie? Oh, with uh, when Mel Gibson's the cop and Danny Glover. And uh, the guy, Lethal Weapon. Yeah, Lethal Weapon. He falls off the building and lands in the swimming pool. That was the only thing the screenwriter knew when he thought of that movie. He was like, that's a really cool idea. <laughs> and they sort of like built everything around it. <laughs> so that's kind of what we do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's yeah. the best example ever. <laughs> Darcy's really good at producing and, and organizing. I mean, I don't think I could do the spreadsheet like she does because she definitely pulls out the huge spreadsheet of shots we have to get. But it, I okay. mean, it's a shot list, right? That's what you, that's what it's technically yeah, called. I mean, there's actually software that you can use that what do I want to say? Professional <laughs> than what we use. Built for, for its purpose. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we don't have that software. So I just use Excel spreadsheets and Google on Google and I put everything together and make a scene list and shot list. Then you start to start pulling it all out. And it's quite intense. It was, it's really fun to do. And as you start, you know, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> it's little, <laughs> like it's halfway over and then you start getting close to the end and you're like, Oh, look at all we have. And it's going to all fit together. It's going to be great. <laughs> and can I just say, I would love to see you mentioned before you have uh, one Google doc that's filled with both of your thoughts. I'd love to see that. <laughs> 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 or sometimes it's text like literally i'll have to go back to if my phone ever goes blank i'm like doomed because I'll, I'll go back on the text and i'll be like remember we said we would use that one song through that one scene going through. right <laughs> no, we're texting each other i'm just texting you this so i remember it oh, right wow. right and our other sister our older sister she's helped us a lot on production design she does interior design and we we have a very similar ways of thinking so i can look at terry and i can be like oh and, and we have you know we, we know a, a lot of the same people it'd be like oh it'd be like you know if uncle dean had <laughs> um you know was wearing a swimsuit that's what i wanted to look like <laughs> she knows what i'm talking about and <laughs> and no one else would so that's oh, man. Nice. so you guys have you have a third sister and she does interior design so you have a writer filmmaker I guess, yeah, I want to say a, a camera shooter. That was what I was going to say. That's not a word. Um, yeah, and and an interior a, designer. Yeah. That's that's yeah. amazing. You, you, you guys just filled out your own film crew. That's, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> now, now, if you only had like some actors, you could just, you know. <laughs> you guys run a production company. Do you do this full time? No, we did. And when we were doing that, we we freelanced and had to do other things. And that included also web design and that kind of thing, because Terry actually ha knows has a lot of those skills. But we decided to get normal jobs so that we could I not... I love that you called it normal jobs. ...creative <laughs> energy on other people's work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, we started out with our company thinking we would do a lot of work for other people. And we did while we were filming, doing the production side of this film. Um, and we thought that that was the direction we wanted to go. But after we were done filming uh, this feature, it became really apparent to us that we kind of get drained by doing other people's work. So we made Nowhere Media into like something that we could put our own work into and then send our work out into the world with that production company. So we kind of stopped doing other people's work. I mean, other than like Darcy says, we do, we do, do day job kind of, you know, things that use our skills, but don't ask us to use too much of our creativity. Like I, I do much more of a functional kind of day job yeah. because I personally want my creativity. I just, nobody pays me enough for that <laughs> personally. That's how I feel. Yeah. So like, I would rather that be for my own stuff. And it, after a while, it can get kind of frustrating when you do creative work for, um, especially for like big corporations or something like that. They just kind of always want more and more and more from you. And then you go home and you sort of like, I'm doing what I love to do supposedly, but I'm doing all this stuff that I'm not happy with. And so I personally had to pull away from that. And then I just said, well, we'll make Nowhere Media. That will be our framework for our creative stuff. We have plenty of ideas. We'd rather that be what nowhere media is, is that, you know, just our own stuff for the most part. And also you don't have creative control at that point. Right. Yeah. And it's, right. that's, it's a and tough that's move. Kind of what's the funny thing about that is that feet, the movie that we did is kind of about that. Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of about this character who sort of keeps, he has a creative drive and people keep trying to take that creative drive and aim oh. it towards their own agenda. And he sort of tries to wrestle it back and it's all done in a very goofy way, but that's kind of what the point is in terms of money and stuff. We really just pieced it together through our own incomes hmm. and a, a heck of a lot of wonderful volunteers who helped us with time uh -huh. and support, um, which we'll never be able to pay them back for that. So that, that really came together in a really nice way um, going forward in the future. When we do stuff, we're hoping to have a bit bigger of a budget than what we want to put together for this one. <laughs> we want to condense the shoot time too. It took us a, a year. Yeah, we're mm. shooting because we also were using volunteers, um, actors, and everybody. All everybody had jobs, you know, and so it was weekends. You have holidays, breaking it up. I mean, it just took a long time. And bless everybody for sticking with us. The three main actors, especially. 
we had friends who had found locations for us that helped us get these great locations for certain scenes. And we'd have to, you know, we'd only have access to them at like midnight from midnight to four because it's a working hotel and Mm -hmm. we'd have to be there. And so it got, it was pretty, you know, rough on, you know, in that regard. It'd be nice just to be able to go in and film and know that you had all the time in the world to do it. But yeah, that's what we shoot for. The next one, we want to have more of a budget and, you know, be able to do it all in like four weeks, at least the bulk of it, so that we're just going, going, going filming. So that's yeah. the goal. Looking back, it looks like it may have been shipped around before, but you guys contacted me because you were looking for some music for a particular scene. So is it still in editing mode? Right. Is it finished? This being our first big project, there's been steps that we probably didn't, we should have taken care of in the beginning <laughs> that we didn't. Um, and one of them was some of the music and music licensing. We had ideas for things, but we hadn't really put them in hard, you know, put them in place like we should have. All so right. we edited it once at one point with another editor who volunteered his time. And that that went well. But when we realized when we brought it back to like my my personal computer, we brought it back into our space and we re looked at it, we realized it wasn't what we wanted. So we went in ourselves and edited for a period of time. <laughs> So we re-edited it at that time. And then we brought the same editor back and he helped us kind of clean it up. But we're also at this point where we're now realizing that even though we have it finished and edited and we have certain music in place, there were certain things like music licenses that yeah. we thought were cleared that weren't. And, you know, basically because we'd worked with a couple of people and they didn't really quite understand what we were looking for. So then we had to kind of go through that and be like, okay, let's check off what what is cleared and what we need to look for. Um, And then at the same time, when you create something that you're going to try to put onto a full screen, you know, I mean, we've made music videos and things in the past and Darcy's worked on some stuff that's gone up on big screens, but we really didn't quite understand some of the formats that we needed. Yeah. And so it came down to just recently, we were like, we're not re-editing it, but we're going back in and we're going to make sure everything is in there is fine, you know, including music polished and and everything's polished. And then we're going to, you know, put it into the formats that we need going forward to Mm. actually fully show it out. But it's never been seen anywhere. So we have some people that, that film festivals that have looked at it and some of them have like given us some great comments and that kind of thing, but they, but we've never screened it anywhere. Okay. So then we thought that was part of what we were doing now. We're like, okay, if we're going to have to do some of this music stuff again, let's redo all this. Let's make sure everything in it is as pristine as possible. And, and then we'll go at it again. After all this is over, we can't get it in anywhere, you know, to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make a trailer that just lists all of the film festivals <laughs> that have rejected us. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say is probably the biggest challenge of being people that make films? It is a huge amount of time. You can do things cheaply, but usually cheaply means you're going to do things slower or you're going to have to take, you know, just longer time to get it done. That's the one thing I think time. The other thing I think is a certain, there is a certain quality amongst people where they sort of think that they have to have more than they may need. We've worked both on commercial projects. You'll you'll get the one director of photography who's a fantastic director of photography he might be really you know skilled in what he does but he also insists that he has to bring you know ten thousand dollars worth of equipment um for you know five minutes and it's not that i'm against that i totally understand that because we all want all those toys and we all want everything to look really great but if you want to get something done sometimes it means you just have to do it with whatever you have on hand and it may not be the mo- the best thing in the world but you actually push yourself through the process I think that's what has been most interesting about this is that going through the entire process, just making ourselves do it. Now, next time, I'm going to be that much more informed about what steps I would take. You know, I know that much more, but you have to go all the way through the process. You can't stop yeah. after the first scene, you know, because you just spent, you know, $10,000 and now you're done. You know, you you have to keep pushing it through. So I think that's one of the hardest things that people run into is just time and then the willingness to kind of try to find a creative um, way around doing what you need to do. Well, I do think that neither one of us had any idea because we had never made a, a, a full length feature film before. We had no idea how long it was going to take <laughs> yeah, and how yeah. just how epically long it is. And it's also a whole different experience to try to tell a story 
with that much time. It's just really interesting. And I think probably the the biggest thing is it's time, it's money, thinking you don't have enough money, or like she was saying, not not being willing to just kind of like go out there and do it. And, and because a lot of us have fear and that fear of um, not getting it perfect and not having it be the best, you know? Well, I mean, it's our first feature film and that was like huge to get over like this idea that, well, maybe not, we're not all like Steven Spielberg or whoever, you know, hmm. but probably most people that make really amazing films started making films and you never saw you know, the the first ones that they did. Yeah. <laughs> Overcoming that feel that thing in your head that's saying that you have to be that person straight right off is probably the biggest reason people don't do it cuz mm-hmm. it's it's pretty hard to do. It's a huge commitment and to to end up in the end and not that I think I don't like feet. I'm actually really I was thrilled when some we got some people from Oaxaca Film Festival wrote about it and they they got it i mean I, I was like thrilled that they understood the point you know which was the underlying point of the whole thing about making your own art and not giving up not letting the world take it over people artists in general need to be for, more forgiving of themselves well and you come to a point like now that it's done it's easy to look at it and all you see are the mistakes in a way like it's it's sort of like you you find yourself knowing now what you would do differently and so now that you know that, you sort of go back in retrospect and you sort of take it apart in a way, which isn't kind of fair. You sort of just have to take that information and move forward. Are you guys currently working on it or are you done working on it now? Now it's just technical, some okay. some polish up stuff that we're going to. Um, we have a post-production house that we're going to work with. Who's, they're just going to basically be able to get it to us in a format that we can both put into a DVD and also show on the big screen. So we're doing some final technical things. Um, the actual edit itself, I would say, is done. Okay. We've, like I said, we've had to switch out a little bit of the music and stuff for different reasons, but that's the edit itself is is pretty finalized. Okay. Well, and I asked that just because my next question was going to be, and we kind of talked about this, but what are some of the things you're going to try to do? Like what's the challenge next for trying to promote it online or say finding the festivals that you're going to send it to? Like, how do you go about that? Without a Box is a website you can join as a filmmaker. You can send your movies out and they have, you can set your screener up so the film festival can, can watch it. That's fairly... It's been around a little while. There's yeah. a newer one called Film Freeway. I think we're going to actually switch over to that. I have a friend. He's He told me, he said basically, without a box is Facebook. Film, Film Freeway is Twitter. Okay. It's, like, it's just faster and cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> like you can get a lot more satisfaction out of like sending out more, to more festivals quickly. And it's just a little bit more. I think more, all the newer festivals are kind of leaning towards Film Freeway. Uh-huh. I think it has something to do with what? without a box um, charges, but I'm not sure, but it um, charges the film festivals. All of this is put together by the, uh, by this post house. We're going to upload it to film freeway. We're going to slam out like to festivals for the next probably three or four months. We're going to plan our screening at um, Alamo. And then we might try to do some promotion for that. It kind of depends. We may run it like a weekend mm. and, and, not just for the people that made it. We're going to give them tickets and have kind of a party kind of thing. Or we might just have two days. We'll have an opening night and a closing night. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a party each night. <laughs> and, uh, but then we, we, I know we do a lot of like Facebook ads and Amazon ads for our books. So I think when we get it up on Prime, um, after all that's over, we'll be putting it up on Prime. And I might try doing some like trailer stuff and some oh, target cool. audience stuff on Facebook yeah. and Amazon to advertise to get people to go there and stream it. Especially since it has the trailers, you should look into YouTube advertising as well, because that's mm-hmm. actually really effective and like much cheaper than most places I've found. Like, it's, yeah, it's, and I, yeah, we haven't done a lot of YouTube because mostly we've been advertising books, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to do all that. So, just, well, just out of experience, I'm telling you, it's actually, you'll be amazed. You'll be like, that's all it cost? It's it's wow. weird. It's, or at least for now, maybe by the time this comes out, people will discover that. <laughs> Who knows? Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. And that might yeah. be it too. <laughs> You're doing it perfect. It's not costing much. <laughs> right. The other thing I want to ask, first of all, how, how did you find our music? That's probably me. Okay. I don't know specifically for yours. 
a lot of stuff that I look for, I, I tend to look for music a lot. Um, it's just something I've always done. Okay. But I think that yours might have come from um, a friend of ours who gave us a list of, and he gave us like a folder of different music. Oh. Which was one reason why I think that that one, that, that's why I just recently contacted you because we didn't really have um, your contact info. So I think I had to search, like search for you. Okay. Um, so that was kind of that. That's where I think that one came from. All right. Um, other music we found. I, I'm a big fan of, or I, I was a big fan of Magnatune for a long time. Yeah. So I I like to look at their their music list, but I think that that's where we found yours. Um, Just some guy so gave you a list. Yeah, we, I yeah, love we that. Had some, some friends who were giving us different folders of different music that that we, that we might want to use. <laughs> so they, you know, I don't know where I'll be honest. I don't know where he found yours. I think I found your information just by Googling you and I'm not sure how I, I can't remember what site I found. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, I may have just like looked up your name. I know there's been a couple of musicians that I've literally just sent them a random email and it's always, it's actually, actually that's been a surprisingly fun thing. I was, I wasn't looking forward to that task. I was actually worried that some of the music that we used we were going to have to switch out because I, I realized suddenly we haven't tracked down some of these things. We mm -hmm. need to track this down and cross our T's kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I have actually enjoyed reaching out to a lot of the musicians because they've all been really great about it. And I was going to ask, is it, it's been a positive yeah. response? Yeah, yeah, it has been it really overwhelmingly. And there was only, a, I think there were three or four that we weren't sure about. Most of the stuff we had pretty locked down, but we were like, so we started going through, I started going through them and just, you know, sending them emails and finding them through different sites. And um, yeah, most of them have been thrilled and, you know, have talked to me and been, it's been fun. It's fun, I think, to to meet, especially this is really fun to like see you. And mm -hmm. there's yeah. other, I mean, that's actually the fun of making movies beyond writing. Like I've always been a writer and I like to write stories of all kinds, but making movies is just this huge conglomeration of people and you never like you work with you think you know what it's going to look like but then you get to the location and it's something's different and that's fine and the actors come and they bring their piece to it mm -hmm. and changes a little bit in your mind of what you originally had and then you know you add music and you bring people in who are lighting and you bring you know this and it's really fun to kind of have all these people involved in this one piece of work i i've enjoyed that a lot so it's, it's really fun to see the faces actually well, plus in, the, in the last in the last uh year or two darcy and i've been mostly focusing on writing and finalizing up like post-production stuff and it's really been kind of isolating that's like that mm. those are the tasks that are much more internal and isolating which i enjoy but it is funny after a while you're sort of like oh my god nobody exists in the world you know <laughs> like, i'm just gonna throw this out here but but i am super interested in uh, for our next film in musicians that are would want to make music for it oh you know, yeah instead of finding songs that are already there i think that's really would be interesting i don't know <laughs> I'm throwing it out there. Yeah, no. I mean, hey, if you want to throw some uh, some music work our way, I mean, I'm, I'm aware that you don't have a large budget. Uh, <laughs> it's not even it's not even been shot yet. Nothing has been shot yet. <laughs> no, in my mind, I'm already working on it. You owe me money. <laughs> it's just kind of a cool thing to have somebody ask you to put your music into a film. I'm pretty sure anybody would love the fact that someone would reach out to them and go, we want to use their music. So would you say no? Would you say yes? They did buy a license for this one so they could do it commercially, even though our stuff is under Creative Commons. But the beauty of it is you can just contact the artist or the musician directly and say, we would like to use this. What compensation would you like? So it's all up to the person that creates the music. I'm glad I got to talk to someone who finally put our stuff into a film, rather than just over email. So it was great meeting them. They were two very interesting people. If you'd like to subscribe to this show, you can go to our site at lorenzosmusic.com, where you can also download all of our music for free. I'll be back next week to talk to a guy in town here who started his own record label. So I'll talk to you later.